Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in the past videos, we discussed the first law in thermodynamics, which is dE equals to dQ minus dW. Then that one was for a closed system, which we don't have energy in and neither energy out. But for a lot of systems, we do have energy in and also energy out. So in that case, we have to consider the first law in the open system. So that's the topic that we're going to take a look today. So in the past, we learned the first law in thermodynamics. Then with all those derivations from the first law for cycle, then we define a new term, uh, cause it as energy, because heat transfer and work, they are both path dependent. However, the difference, they are path independent. So we define that term as energy. Then energy is dq minus dw. Then this is also the first law for closed system. So it's dE equals to du, which is internal energy, equals to dQ minus dW. Then the system is a closed system. Then we have the control volume with the dashed line here. Then both valves, they're closed. So we don't have any mass in or mass out. So it's a closed system. So the inside of the control volume, it's du equals to dq minus dw. All right, so that was for a closed system. However, if both valves, uh, they are open, then we are going to have fluid in and the fluid out. Uh, then the system is going to be an open system. Because of the fluid in and out, we will also have energy in and energy out. Since we do have energy in and energy out, so we will need to consider the time. So if we divide it by dt on both sides of the first law, then we have dE over dt equals to q dot minus w dot. Then this dot means divided by dt. Then like we said, for open systems, uh, we have fluid in and also fluid out. So we are going to have energy in and energy out. Then our energy is going to be kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy. And because the fluid, they are moving in this case. Uh, so whenever you have moving fluid, uh, then we also need to consider this PV, similar as thermodynamic work. It's because of the moving of the fluid. Then from previous classes, we learned U plus PV, that is enthalpy. So we use H for enthalpy. Then our new energy balance is going to be E equals to kinetic energy, potential energy, and also enthalpy and with the specific energy format. So this is the specific format. And like we said, because we have mass in and also mass out, so we will need to consider the energy because of those mass in and the mass out. So for mass in, then the energy is this expression, kinetic energy, potential energy, and also enthalpy. And the similar thing for energy out. And let's assume it's in steady state. So steady state means the energy change is independent with time. So the time won't matter. So if it's in steady state means mass in equals to mass out. Then with the energy in and energy out, then our first law, instead of just the dE equals to dQ minus dW, then because of the energy in and energy out, 
So we will need to consider energy in and energy out. So besides dq minus dw, we need to add all the energy in and subtract all the energy out. For the steady state, like we said, the mass in equals to mass out. Then our previous formula is going to be in this way. And since we have mass on each term, then we can take mass out. Then turns out to be we are here. Then if we divide it by time on both sides, then this is our first law in open system. Then, like we said, so steady state means time won't matter. So the energy balance will be independent with time. That meaning dE over dt is going to be zero because it's steady state and independent with time. All right, then let's look at an example. So for this problem, it says air modeled as an ideal gas. So the substance here is air, so it's not water. So be careful. And the entire diffuser, it's well insulated. So well insulated means no heat transfer. That's good. Okay, so for the diffuser, it's in steady state, means dE over dT is zero. That's great as well. Then at the beginning, the inlet temperature is 270K. Then the speed is 180 meter per second. Then for the outlet, then the speed is 48.4 meter per second. Then it says neglect changes in potential energy, then find the exit temperature of the air. So let's take a look. So here is the solution. Then we start off the energy balance at dE over dT equals to Q dot minus W dot plus M dot then with all the energy. Then because of a steady state, so dE over dT is zero. Then because it's well insulated, then no heat transfer. And also in the whole problem, we didn't talk about work at all, so no work either. Then turns out to be on the left, it's zero. So the right side of the formula must be zero as well. Then M dot, which is mass change, it won't be zero because we have fluid in and fluid out all the time. So M dot won't be zero. So the problem also says neglect the changes in potential energy. So this Z term is zero as well. So it turns out to be this part must be zero because on the left is zero, then mass dot is not zero. So this part must be zero. Then we know initial velocity and the final velocity. Then since entropy is depending on the temperature, which dH equals to Cp times dt. So it's depending on the temperature. And it looks like we know the initial temperature. So by looking at the table, then we can find the enthalpy at the stage one. So we could calculate for enthalpy of stage two. So H2 equals to this formula. Then we could plug numbers in. So before that, we need to find out the enthalpy. So when the temperature is 270K at the initial one, so when we look up the table, so be careful, the substance is air, so don't look up for H2Os. Then with the air table, then it looks like when the temperature is 270, the enthalpy is going to be 270.11. Then be careful, the units is in kilojoule per kilogram. Then for the standard international units, Energy is in joule, not kilojoule. So we'd better convert kilojoule to joule by times three zeros on the right, because when we add those together, those velocity, they are in standard international units. So we'd better convert this enthalpy to standard international units as well. 
system by plugging numbers in turns out to be we are 285,000 joule per kilogram. Then we move three zeros on the left, then it's about 285.14 kilojoule per kilogram. Then this is our final enthalpy. Then by looking up the table again, so when the enthalpy is 285.14, that looks like the temperature is 285K. Then so our final temperature is 285K. All right, so this is all we have for today's part. Hope you learn a lot. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.